have markets really gotten crazier over time? I mean, it seems so, but shouldn't modern investors with all their data be better than the coked up hair gel guys of the 1980s? I mean, in the 1920s, they used to sit on flagpoles for fun. We gotta be smarter than that, right? Right? Well, wrong, says Cliff Asness, Wall Street's math wizard and founder of AQR Capital. He says markets aren't just crazier, they're objectively less rational. But wait, how can a price even be irrational? If someone wants to pay $5 for something, isn't it worth $5? I may think it's crazy that a cryptocurrency called Fartcoin, which is neither a coin nor a fart, trades for a dollar. But hey, if people are willing to pay that, who's to say that that price is irrational? Well, Cliff says, I'm the man, I know what I'm doing, I can say it, and this market has lost its mind. Here's his evidence. This graph tracks the value spread over time, the ratio of valuations, like price to book, of expensive stocks versus cheap ones. When the spread is high, investors are following hype and ignoring bargains. It's a gauge of market irrationality. And indeed, over the past few years, the rational market has been murdered. Look at the mask with my boy. So who did it? Well, the market is a product of millions of people's individual decisions. So there's gonna be a lot of murders. Where did they all come from? One of the big trends over the past 30 years is the rise of index funds. If I'm at a party, which does happen occasionally, and I mention I'm an economist, the usual reaction is the person walks away in disgust. But if they stay, they'll ask me, hey, Mr. Economist, what should I do with my money? And my answer is the same boring answer every economist gives put it in an index fund. The idea of an index fund is that instead of trying to beat the market, you just want to match its growth. Don't try to be special. The best you can hope for is average, which coincidentally was the same advice my dad gave me. Anyway, active traders in the market are some mixture of well-measured, researched nerds and vibe-based thrill seekers. Your Sherlock's versus your Stonks. Over the past 30 years, many would-be Sherlock's have migrated to index funds. So the market is increasingly reflecting the whims of Diamond Hands 420 or whoever over disciplined investors. These stonks are our would-be murderers. But students of true crime know that murderers need motive, means, and opportunity. The motive is, of course, money, but there's more to it. There's status. There's an old idea called the wisdom of the crowds. The idea is if, if you took a thousand people and asked them to guess the weight of a cow, the average would be better than any one estimate from an expert. But this only works if the crowd guesses independently. If the guesses are public, then the crowd becomes a mob. I don't know, maybe a thousand? You dunce. This cow obviously weighs exactly 50 pounds. Yeah, the yeah, guy with the deeper yeah, voice is yeah. right. And mobs are rarely rational. Also, this haircut's cool now. In mobs, people compete for clout. In the 1920s, this looked like sitting on a flagpole. In the 2020s, this looks like holding GameStop. So social media turns our investors into a status-hungry mob. Motive, check. Let's talk means. In the olden days, you know, it was very difficult to trade stocks. You had to call someone, there are fees. Now you can do it with an app. Think, like back in the day, it took real effort to be a degenerate. You had to like know a bookie, and call them, or you had to go all the way to Vegas, stay up all night. It was hard work being a loser. But these days, I could do an eight-way parlay and lose my house from the comfort of my formerly owned house. So motive, check. Means, check. Opportunity? Well, for opportunity, Asnes suggests that the low interest rates that we had for the 2010s into the pandemic provided easy access to money. Essentially, the money printer was turned to 11. So murder solved. It was overconfident, mostly young men, supercharged with easy money using their phones to chase clout. But look on the bright side. Back in the day, these same people, they'd be in an army, serving Genghis Khan or on a Viking longboat, burning villages, murdering townsfolk. Nowadays, they just burn their own cash and murder the efficient market hypothesis. If you'd like to look at these topics in more depth, head on over to our Substack, or you can watch more from the Econ Nerds.